All right, I, I'm going to just do an introduction. So um, um, I, I'm going to call the order of the Site and Architectural Review uh, Committee, the SARC, uh, which is meeting today, February 15th, 2021. Uh, for those who are joining tonight, the SARC is a subcommittee of the Planning Commission that provides feedback on the architectural design and site layout of the proposed development projects before they are presented at the Planning Commission. By ways of introduction, my name is uh, Alan Zisser. I'm uh, Vice Chair of the Planning Commission now, uh, and I lead the SARC meeting tonight. We, we also have a fellow commissioner, Matt Kamkar. 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 So, so there's two of us from the Planning Commission that, that are on the SARC committee. Um, in terms of conducting the meeting, uh, each item will be announced uh, then the staff will do a presentation at which we may have, there may be some questions that we have for the staff. After that, we'll look for any input from the applicant uh, uh, that represents the project, uh, both of you, uh, and receive any additional public comments if there's additional public comments. Following this, we will have further questions for staff, the applicant, public speakers, and we'll finish by providing feedback on the project. That will be then forward to the planning commission next month. All month. Okay. Um, normally, we actually have this before the planning commission meeting, so we limit the time. It's an hour before the planning commission meeting, but we don't really have that tonight. But yeah, I don't think this could be a long thing. But we're, you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna use that. Usually, it's like a fifty minute limit. So. I don't think it's even good. I don't know if we'll even have to worry about that. So we don't have to deal with that. Um, um, so tonight, there's one item, uh, PLN 2022-79, uh, 2428-28 uh, uh, East Campbell Avenue. And I guess I'll just turn that over to you. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So we'll try to keep this uh, fairly productive. Oh, I should ask you if there's any modifications or no 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 just the one item and no correspondence so this is for a plan development permit at 24 east campbell avenue uh, so shown here oh, daniel wait a minute i just just for uh transparency's sake um i forgot um i'm actually it's a it's a 500 foot limit correct okay so i actually live in the heritage village apartments across the street oh. it's more than 500 feet um, so there's not, and and because I don't oh. own it, I don't own, I just rent. There's really actually no conflict of interest. There's no financial conflict of interest, but I, I, I like to be extra transparent anyway. So just to know that I'm actually quite close and I actually know the area quite well. I guess in that regard too, maybe Commissioner Camp Carr, if you could disclose how you know the applicant. Of course. Uh, so uh, I don't know anything about the project. But I have met the applicant probably 10 years ten ago, years 10, ago 12 years ago. Yeah. I used to organize a, um, a, a an Iranian New Year celebration in Vasona Park. <laughs> and the applicant was a vendor at the time that he would rent one of the booths, you know, and yeah. uh, present his services, you know, and products. So uh, that's, uh, but I don't believe we've done business for the past no. 2000 and 10 was nine when it was last time. So for the past 14 years. Quite a long time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sounds Great. Good. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So the project site is 2428 East Campbell Avenue. Uh, this is the small property that is occupied by the former Heroes comic book building at the front, plus a small residential building at the rear. And this is uh, just at the entrance to the downtown one parcel. Uh, east of the uh, Winchester Boulevard. So and, I'll just, and that's a subway next door? Correct, that's a subway, Psycho Donuts. Um, the city had previously approved a remodel of this building, but the applicant uh, decided to proceed with a different approach for a comprehensive development of the property here. Okay. So the property is within the PD Plan Development Zoning District but is also within the center commercial land use designation. So it is 
part of the downtown in terms of the general plan, but not technically within the same zoning district. It's just outside of that zoning district. So we'll just go through the staff report just a little bit. So what's being proposed here is a three-story, approximately 8,000 square foot mixed-use building. Um, of note, this has three residential units, and then the balance of the space is non-residential office space uh, and showroom space at the Campbell Avenue storefront. Now, because the balance of the building is approximately 50-50, uh, it does not actually constitute a housing development project under the Housing Accountability Act. So all the discussion about objective standards that we had yesterday, that doesn't actually apply to this. So the commission and the SARC and the council do have more discretionary latitude here, should you wish to exercise it. Because you said because it was less than 50% residential? Well, the threshold actually is 66% uh, or more oh. for it to be a housing project. And this is about 50-50. Good. So because of that, it's not technically a housing project. Good. So there is a bit more discretion in that way. All right, so we have uh, three residential units. It's coming in at uh, 23 units per gross acre, which is just under the 27 units. So this is a small piece of property, uh, and this is really as many units that can fit on it. Uh, the FAR on paper is only 1.0, which is under the 1.5 max. Now that's because as a mixed use building, the residential square footage does not count against the FAR. It's an intended to be an incentive. So if you actually added all the square footage, you would have the FAR closer to two, but technically on paper, it's only about one. Good. Now with regard to reviewing it, even though it's not subject to objective standards requirements, we do try to at least ground the analysis and policies and standards that we do have. And so those are coming out from the downtown development plan. So the downtown development plan encourages mixed use projects, this is, and that is intended to provide active storefront activity at the ground level. So he's proposing to have his showroom, which is a type of retail activity, which would be allowable. Uh, in terms of the physical development, this is a very uh, visible site coming into the downtown. So it is uh, imperative that the building be well designed at uh, both the front and the side. So you'll notice here that the building uh, is well designed at the front, but also has extensive articulation across the entire side of the building facing uh, west, since this will be entirely visible until such time as, uh, that the, this adjacent subway property is developed. So until then, uh, you will see this building very visibly. Uh, in terms of the uh, policy, it speaks to try and maintain urban small town densities, uh, which is a balancing act, trying to ensure that you do have something that is more intense, but not overly uh, intensified in an area. So the illustration here shows the relationship between the proposed building and the adjacent buildings. Of note here, you do have the building basically split in half and two design features. So you have the lower half that's trying to match the height of the adjacent buildings. And then this upper area is actually stepped back to minimize massing as perceived from Campbell Avenue. Um, and then in terms of materials and colors, uh, here we have uh, the material palette showing the natural stone cladding that would be contrasted with the wood composite siding. Uh, there would be stone elements and uh, some metal railing features as well. Uh, the project does not include any parking. It had originally included some parking, but that was creating some technical challenges. And then with the passage of AB 2097, uh, the parking that had been proposed in the rear was removed and then was uh, repurposed for additional office space. Uh, with regard to open space, there is no open space requirement for the Planned Development Zoning District, but the, un the residential units would have balconies and there would also be a rooftop deck for use by the residents. And then lastly, uh, we did want to highlight that in terms of public improvements, the Public Works Department is requiring that the property dedicate two feet of land so that the sidewalk in front of it can be expanded to 10 feet in width. Uh, that's pretty much what we believe is reasonable. However, the this particular property, even though it is technically within the downtown development plan, the Winchester development plan somewhat overlaps a little bit. And the Winchester plan uh, has this idea of trying to actually create a ball valve and require land to create parking along the street front. 
However, for that to be achieved, the project would require dedication of upwards of eight feet of additional land, which in staff's assessment would be excessive and likely infringe on the property owner's rights as a type of taking. Um, so staff is not recommending that this concept to be effectuated as part of the project. So this is just a, um, it was a nice idea, but from a practical perspective, uh, we do not believe it can be realistically implemented. A question? Yes. Uh, is that appropriate to ask questions? Uh, yeah, um, uh, that's that's pretty much the end of it. Oh, so, okay. So um, uh, the reason they would have to give an additional eight feet if they were going to be parking is that the public work still wants their 10 feet. Well, no, no. So public works is asking for two feet. Right. And so that provides a 10 foot sidewalk. Okay. What this plan was trying to do was to basically take this sidewalk line and push it all the way here. You see how the sidewalk actually yes. curves? Yes. By doing that, you could have provided parking here, right. but it would require basically all this land to be removed. I see. Uh, which again, it's just, it's too much. It's not realistic. So it's really about putting in the uh, parking. Yeah, the, the, the part Correct, I would have been trying to do that. Uh, um, I've seen projects where, you know, that gets required, but then the top portion can come back in, you know, so they don't lose the whole, you know, eight foot vertically. They would lose all the way around, but then yeah. would be, you know, but, yeah, but I do agree on a small slot. It's just, you know, yeah, I mean, likely the only way this could have been feasible is if the entire block had been purchased and developed at once. Right. You know, and maybe the plan could have required that development only occur upon assemblage of all the properties, but it never did that. And so because of that, it's really just a provision that just can't be implemented. Plus, again, the city's on the this area is no longer subject to a parking requirements. So there's also a, an argument trying to add more parking is counterproductive now. Okay. And uh, is there any f further questions? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I uh, as far as questions go, I guess, I guess the, the question I have is on the parking. Um, I understand you know, the parking. There's mention of possible um, uh, making a deal with, uh, which is, there, there's a present, Presently, there's like a the parking spaces on the side. Uh, so, so how how likely is it that you'll be able to? I mean, my take is got three apartments. They're gonna have, uh, one, two, or three of those people that are living there are gonna have cars, and and there's um, there's you know, the desirability of not having parking if you have an apartment is, is not very good, right? So, and, and there's this, and even if there were street parking, um, it, it's not desirable to leave your car on the street, right? Nowadays, it's like not the security is a problem. So I guess my question is, you know, there's a there's a number of parking spaces along the side there that, that are, um, I guess, owned by the other, uh, the commercial, uh, people, um, uh, how likely is it that you can make an agreement with them to um, uh, get some of those parking spaces for the apartments? I believe uh, uh, Payman already has some agreement with the next door neighbors. Still, they have agreement with them uh, uh, for parking spot from the next door, uh, but that is not permanent. It's just right. year by year. So, uh, is, it, uh, have is your intent is maybe to? To keep that, to not only keep it, but maybe make it. I mean, you know, once you have the apartments in, it's like, uh, you know, to go year by year, it's, it's, that doesn't sound like a really good plan, right? It's like they have more of a multi year deal. But, so you don't have to worry about that in the future. I, I'm just thinking from perspective of uh, the apartment uh, uh, tenants that, uh, they're going to want to have a place to have at least one parking space. Oh, it's a very valid point. And uh, actually, the building was designed with the three parking spots for the three apartments. But um, one thing led to another yeah. regarding the parking ordinance and all that. Yeah. And we were kind of 
advice, you know, that probably better we get rid of. There, the there's a back alley, right? That, yeah, correct. The back alley, the driveway, it ends in two parking. And you're taking space. Space. you're taking you're taking some of that space for the apartment. It is still some area at the back of the property. Yeah, the building is staying that, outside that is of the alley line. Build, it it two cars fit side to side there. Actually, four cars if tandem. So are, are those going to be available? Yes. So there is going to be some park. Yes. Oh, okay. We, we cannot call it as a parking. It's but not formal parking. Okay. Is it is it's an easement? Space. Is it access easement? So uh, basically, you know, oh. two car in the front and two car in the back. So four cars. Yeah, the challenge. This area had originally been programmed for parking. The, the challenging thing is that the three parking spaces can't actually be there because one of them needs to be an accessible parking space for somebody with disabilities. And then once you do that, you need the loading space. So realistically, what you have is one accessible space, one loading space, and one just regular space. So it it didn't really make a lot of sense. So you have to. I would also note too. I mean that like a lot of situations, I mean there's also selection bias when it comes to and someone who is willing to rent an apartment without a car, maybe doesn't actually need parking space because they know that apartment doesn't come with parking. Yeah, uh, no, I understand that, but you know, we've had this debate at the, at the commission meetings about the parking. Yeah, future. I, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the pragmatic guy that says, you know, there's still going to be cars. <laughs> 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 You're making a good point. Um, actually, uh, one other option that uh, you know uh, my client has is to get into agreement with the local parking garage and offer that to the tenant as an option. So that's that option is always on the table. Yeah. So uh, this was the design that we did for the garage first, and then we yeah. yeah. Oh. But still, we have this area. Two car pits here and two car in the back. Right. If you need it. Right. Okay. Um, do you have anything else? Um, oh, the, the 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 fact that it's going to be your showroom. Mm -hmm. So it's not just going to be a, a construction office. No, it's it going to be, be a, a, a something where it's we're selling. Work. Yes, we're selling uh, basically construction materials. Okay. Some major items. Home um, remodeling. Home remodeling of showroom, basically. Okay. So, uh, like doors, windows. I see. Um, okay. You know. Right. Yeah. Okay. Which and, specific, and the only other question down. I have is, so is Heroes closed down now? Have they closed yet? Not yet. I didn't think so because no. I was just no, in there, renting. I was just in there a few weeks ago. Yes. Yes. And so yes. they will have to, at some point. Yes. We just exit from there. Yeah. My, my grandson didn't very For your commercial space, uh, what type of clients were you thinking? Like um, homeowners, but for the commercial. For the commercial. For it's the, my own rules, basically. Oh, I see. It's You're my, not going to rent that out. That's, no, that's the second floor. Yes, it's going to no. be your offices. Uh, the second floor, there are three residential. So okay. two on the second floor, and then actually one in the second one floor. One on the second. And two. On the top. Top. So three residential and one commercial. And then one storefront. Well, the storefront is on the bottom, right? Correct. And then, so I, if I'm not mistaken, I heard three stories. So on the second floor, you have one residential. What's then the rest of it? It's a, it's the same as the store. It's a mezzanine, basically. You also have a mezzanine on the second floor that overlooks into the showroom. Oh. So okay. that mezzanine going to be office area. Um, okay. But so that's going to be an indoor mezzanine. Yes. That's correct. Okay. I see. And then, and then you're going to have a rooftop. That's correct. Accessible to yes, the to residents, yeah, because of shortage of land sure. is pretty popular these days, especially in yeah. the San Francisco area. Oh, I love it. I, I mean, I, you know, to be honest, I'm a proponent of going up, yes, so that you have more room left over, more yes. space, yes. you know. So, you get to ask a question. <laughs> I have ask a question, we'll get to that. We'll get to their conclusions later. Well, my question was, oh, actually, yeah. my question was about you know where what the second floor is going to be. If you have the section, I guess. Do you have a section plan there? Uh, if no, you have it, it is no, basically this one, like uh, this one. Oh, next one probably. There's one more. Here we go. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And actually, there's one more. Oh, this elevation. That's there is a section. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's a good That's a storefront. Yeah, that's good one. So that's a, yeah. It's that's a showroom. That's a showroom. Show and the mezzanine inside. I see. And that, that's backside is a one resident, one unit. And then the third floor is one unit here, one unit here. Right. Yeah, right. So, so, so the showroom is pretty high. Isn't yes, it? it's oh. a, yes, it's a. It's an 1890. So it's a big open space there. Yeah. And, then, and then you have elevator? Yes. Yes. Elevator. Fantastic. Here. You see the shaft, uh, shaft and then the top it says open space in the bottom it's a rooftop basically sure and then you have a back office back office there which was a parking now is a back office so we will move our construction company there i also have a construction company so i, I don't have any more questions i don't either. Um, So, well, I guess the, one other question is, you know, I mean, there is a, there, there are, on the back, there are two small, I guess they're duplexes, and I think it's two single story units, right? Um, which will be, which are single story, and they are residential, but they're not single family homes. Should we be concerned at all about on the site? So yeah, it's those. Uh, Are we with privacy issues or? Yeah. It, well, yeah. So it, so these two buildings right there. Those two things are. I I think they're duplexes. There are high density. I think is eight units. Oh, there are how many units? Eight. Oh, so there's four. Eight. There are four plexes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, generally with privacy impacts, you either have an impact because you're looking down in someone's yard or you're looking into their windows. I mean, this doesn't really present either of those. Yeah, you're looking at the roofs. Exactly. Okay. All right. And there's only one unit uh, that fits in your back. So I, I'm sorry. Yes. Two yes. units. Yeah. One yeah. second. One. They're looking at, they're basically looking at the, the parking lot of, okay. the, of the four plexes. Yeah. And then the other one is, which I didn't even know, I actually walked around. I walked it around this afternoon because the block is the other one is a office building. Office building. That is a high tech thing. The, the one, the trade. The, the, the one, the one to the yeah. That's the terminal. Bit. So the so the eight units, the four plexes are this one. Uh, those two are four plexes each, and they're, they're very small. And then the taller building, what is that one? That one is the the existing. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the one we're going to demolish, and that's part of the same. Oh, is that, that's like a one apartment? Is that like a one? It's just one apartment. Yeah. Apartment. Does anybody live in there? Yeah. Yes, it's rented out. Both oh, of them hidden, rented. It's just hidden back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that the, so the so will the the entire the the front structure and the back structure be totally demolished? Oh, no. Yes. Right. And then you have access to go out um, on either way, either, either, either. Yeah. back side and front side. So you don't have to turn around if you don't need to interest. Just... For the drive, there's a pedestrian access both Present. ways, front and back. Yeah. yeah. But, but but driveway access only uh, back, only in the back. Front, yeah. Okay. And I also point out there is separate access between the commercial, the front, and then the residential office. It's a walkway. We're just taking the land five feet in, going to the lobby, to yeah. the elevator. Yeah. And this setback here, having building set in, allows you to actually have those windows. Because if you had the building right at the edge, you couldn't have all that glazing for fire code reasons. Okay. And, and, and I guess I didn't notice, uh, it, it, there's an existing fence there and will that remain? What's, what's, what's there? The yeah. fence is- There's an existing wooden fence? It's half of, of the property. Half of the property is a fence. The other half is- the comic book store is right in the oh, right, right, right. That's yeah. where the end is. <clears throat> so, so will that be open? Will there be a fencing? Yes, there will be a fencing all the, way, she, all the way to the all the way to the property residential. No, in that area. Well, no, you, oh, you have oh, you can have windows. It's a setback, okay. so it's not yeah. a property. So you can have windows for the uh, retail for the retail. Yes, right. That's why we have to go back. Yeah. So the fence will come to maybe this close. Right. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess it's now 
if you you have anything that you at this point you want to say i don't know if we have a very public anybody on the public it's just or it's just us it's us okay so if, if there's anything that you want to um further uh, mention or provide us information on well, as uh, Daniel mentioned, this project's been around the city for the past two, three years. Oh, yeah. we initially, we, uh, so. initially, we designed three-story building, but then we faced parking challenges. And we had to scratch that idea and just resort to remodeling the existing. And then the city changed some ordinances, and the problem was more lenient so that's why we resorted back to the original idea so that's how this came about yeah we started in 2019 and then 18. 18 we had a similar design and then everything was fine we moved forward and then we faced the issue there was a program that we can use the parking in Luffy. yeah so opa had to use it but for this building, it was not available at the time. And then because I made it for my business, I did uh, another, uh, just the remodeling, uh, broadening and all that, got approved, structural building approved, spend a lot of money all around, right before pulling the permit. And then we were notified that we can do such a thing. And then we put everything aside again, Started another time, so that's our third time going this route. So, okay. so I'm assuming <laughs> I'm assuming the planning department is comfortable with. I'm not an architectural guy in terms, you know, it's, yeah. you know, it's, you know, the in terms of the facade and the, and the materials are all acceptable from the planning department's perspective. We are. I mean, it's a um, it's a balance with these types of buildings in the downtown. You don't want it to look too modern. And so what that would mean is that you don't want particularly glass curtain walls where the whole thing is like glass, like at Santana Row, where you have the uh what's that beer restaurant? Yard house. Yard house, absolutely. Yeah. That type of very modern glass building would not be appropriate in or, or an apple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or an apple. <laughs> at the same time, though, you also don't want buildings that look intentionally too old fashioned. So this tries to bridge that. So it does have kind of the stone, it's still open temporary without being overly modern or overly traditional. Okay. Yeah, we used a lot of uh, staff recommendation back and forth while we were designing. So we were syncing very closely. Do you have solar panels on you? We would like to add that. So well, we'll have an area for uh, you know, PV panels. Oh, fantastic. That's wonderful. Okay. So now, if you have any thoughts about how you feel about it, well, I think you know. I mean, uh, I, everywhere I look, it looks good. You know, it looks like they have thought about all the angles and stuff. As is very um, uh, helpful, you know, in uh, pointing out what's possible, what's not possible. So I, I, I like it. It's, it's very nice. I especially like that you're going up. You know, I you know I think you, you well as a city we like to have retail spaces mm -hmm. and commercial spaces you know because of the uh, revenue that it generates. But then you also are putting residential in there. Which that's that's what we call the missing middle. You know, for people who can't afford the big houses or you know um, they want something smaller in the downtown and. This is perfect. So all around, I think it's a great project. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, you know, my take is, yeah, I was, uh, I guess I'm very familiar because <laughs> I live right down the moon there for quite some time. And so I walked by there. Um, uh, I know the area really well. And so it, it was in, uh, when I first saw this uh, listed um, on the um, on uh, DRC agenda. Yeah, on DRC agenda. I was like, oh, that, that, yeah. So um, I, I, I like I like the idea of having the rooftop um, accessible deck. Um, I, I think the the your your you know it, it it's I may not like 
the fact of having your construction thing in the middle it's of downtown. Exclude. No, no, that no downtown, like in the middle of downtown. But 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 the nature of that one block where there's you know a fireplace, whatever it is, yes. you know, it, it, it's, it's fine there. Yeah. You know, it's fine. It, it wouldn't necessarily go well in the middle of the the, the old downtown yes. as far as far as being a. a a retail place, but but I, I think it's fine there, um, uh, and and I think it looks I think it looks good, and um, you know we have to live with the parking limitation thing. It's just that's the way it is now. Uh, since you're so close to mass transit, you qualify for that, um, and uh, it's it's three more it's three more residential units that so will be available for uh, people that you know. Uh, in the downtown area, you know, and be close to downtown and other, you know, and, you know, other, the whole area is, you know, um, has more commercial. So, um, so I, I feel, I feel pretty good about it. I think, I think can't, we can't speak for the rest of the commission, okay. but um, it, I, I see, I see no issues at all in terms of, of what you've come up with. And, um, uh, I actually look forward to uh, to seeing it become a reality. So, you. Uh, assuming you get approval, uh, all the necessary approvals, what's it, what do you think your timing on this thing is? Anytime. As soon, as, as, ready, soon as you can? Yeah, we were ready for the past two, <laughs> two and a half years, <laughs> three years. <laughs> By the way, if I may say uh, something about parking, uh, the idea that I said the contract with the local garage. That came from one of my previous projects. I was a project architect on a, you're familiar with the building block with the Aki? So the yes. three stories. Right, right. Um, Look, yeah, that was my project. And oh, really? uh, we didn't have enough parking for the older residential unit on second and third floor. And uh, so we had the agreement with the next door garage. Right. And, uh, so. Mm -hmm. Similar agreement can be made here. Well, you know, if you can, I see that would be a great thing. You know, I mean, it's not that far. It's a couple of block blocks. Exactly. It's, it's a good place. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, some, uh, you know, sometimes we work projects with um, uh, auto dealerships, new auto dealerships, and they like store a lot of cars for inventory for their cars. And so now they're using some inspectors. Yeah, just go in and you know, check it up, and another one goes below it. You know, basically double your parking. Yeah, that's expensive. Yeah. yeah, and nobody's done that in Campbell yet. We've had a couple people ask about it, but nobody's done it. Yeah. Well, they were talking about the one-off on Hamilton and Lee. Mm, yeah. About doing a stack. Yeah. But I'm not it's talking expensive. about the ones that you know, like you leave your car and it like shuffles mm -hmm. it and yeah. like what that one. Talking just a. Just a simple old elevator. Double stack. Yeah. You, know, you you just drive on it, you push a button, it just goes up and that's it. Exactly. And then you can't get it down if there's another car under it. You have to take this car out. It has to be a tandem for those. Uh... Well, either that or it belongs to the same unit. So you have the key to remove yeah. this car if you have to have this car, you know. I'm using that actually in a project in uh, Redwood City. I see. Yeah. And just in case. There's a double stacker. Double stacker, right. Okay. Okay, well, I guess right. uh, we're all done. So this will come to the commission in one month and then to the city council a month after that. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.